Now, Buckingham Palace say that Prince Andrew's military titles and royal patronages have been returned to the Queen. And the woman who's accused the Duke of York of sexual abuse has praised a US judge's decision to allow her legal case to continue. So, as you all know, Prince Andrew faces a civil case in the US after Virginia Dufresne sued him, claiming he abused her in 2001. Yes, he has consistently denied the claims, we must emphasise. Well, joining us now to discuss this is Nigel Cawthorn, author of Prince Andrew Epstein Maxwell and the Palace. Give us a, an update on your thoughts as the story has developed. Well, it was a very uh, terse um, uh, letter of dismissal, isn't it? If you were being sacked, wouldn't you say, want, want something a little bit more fulsome? Um, so I think what uh, that, what they really want um, is for him to go into exile. Um, I understand he has some rather wealthy friends in Kazakhstan, maybe the place to go. I believe Kazakhstan is lovely this time of year as well. Um, but in fact, I believe it was a Kazakhstan who overpaid on one of Prince Andrew's houses by some three million pounds. And so potentially, you know, potentially he does have some wealthy friends over there. As a man, what will Prince Andrew be thinking now? Because we've got to be honest with you, he's always come across, especially in the Emily Maitlis interview, as a deeply arrogant chap. That's the way that my personal interpretation of it has been. No one would have given that kind of interview with that kind of subject matter in that kind of tone if they weren't really very sure of themselves to their core. How will he be feeling today? Well, it, it, there's always the problem of the, uh, of the second son of the, of the monarch, isn't there? They don't really have a role. And, and he had all these ceremonial rules that, it, that he has been stripped of. Um, he's still, strangely, a, a, a chancellor of state, which means that he can, he can step in if the Queen's indisposed. Um, which is, would be a rather intriguing prospect. And also that, that, that there's a real problem for the, for the palace that, that, um, when it comes to the summertime, because he has uh, uh, the, the Queen's uh, silver jubilee medal, the Queen's golden jubilee medal, the Queen's diamond jubilee medal. Will he get the platinum jubilee medal as well? OK, no, uh, uh, absolutely. And obviously the Queen... Now has has got a platinum jubilee coming up. She is not getting any younger. It pains me to say, and she would have hoped to have been able to potentially, you know, shuffle on and uh, uh, knowing that the future of the royal family is taken care of. Uh, how damaging do you think these allegations are going to be to the royal family? We're running a Twitter poll at the moment, by the way. Is, do you think the royal family will be around in a hundred years' time? So far, I think it was fifty-four percent of people thought it would. Where are you on that? Well, uh, the, 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 obviously, this is, is very deeply damaging to, to the, the royal family, and there, there was, and there was the question also of um, uh, I don't know whether I've gone into this before that, that, that everyone assumes that that uh, Prince Charles automatically t takes the throne on, on the death of his mother or the abdication of his mother, um, uh, which isn't the case. So that there's a thing called the Accession Committee who have to invite the next monarch to take the throne. And they issue a proclamation that says that they, they, they're doing so with one heart, one voice and one mind, which means legally that it must be a unanimous uh, decision by, by the commission. Now, there are various big wigs on this, uh, commission, uh, on this uh, commission, um, in, including the Lord Mayor of London, for example, but all Privy Councillors are automatically um, members of the Privy Council. Um, and... We know there's several prominent uh, Republicans uh, among, on the Privy Council, in, including one Jeremy Corbyn. If he says no, then I don't know what happens then, frankly. Um, there's some sort of constitutional crisis. Wow, actually, that's a, that's a fascinating point, I must say. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware of that. So, there, so, well, yeah, I suppose you said you don't know what would happen. Constitutional crisis. It comes from the, uh, gold, uh, the, the glorious revolution in 1688, when we kicked out um, James II and invited the, the, the William and Mary to take the throne. Well, it's fascinating. So we'll have to extrapolate on that uh, uh, another time, because there's just one more thing I'd like to ask you now before we go off and, and give our viewers the headlines, which is about Glenn Maxwell, actually. And... She has, is it, am I right in saying she's agreed to, there are some kind of eight very prominent figures who she's agreed to name now, is that right? Who potentially uh, involved in, in her dealings, I suppose? Because uh, I read a headline this morning, eight very nervous men, apparently. Well, 
I mean, that's all she's got, isn't it? I mean, she's a socialite, and and, and you depend on your your your, your address book, um, your Rolodex, for to to, to uh, have influence in, the, in this world. And the only way that she's going to get out of jail, as far as I can see, is, is to throw some others under the bus. Mm, uh, gosh, well, it'll be fascinating to see exactly who they are or if indeed she does it. But, Nigel, thank you very much, as always, and I hope you have a cracking Friday and a great weekend as well. Nigel Cawthorn there, of course, uh, f fantastic author in all things Andrew-related. Where do you stand on